Okay. Oh wow, people are already here. Just let me put the light on. Oh wow. Hello, hello, hello. So sorry, I'm just coming on now. I've been trying to get on. So we're starting right away. I just got into the house right now and we are starting. Starting, 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 right, 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 right now. All right. So in case you're joining me for the first time or you're meeting me for the first time, I am Nancy Ekpezu and I'm the lead consultant at Pezu Smith Consulting. Our organization works with schools and other organizations um, to help them put their admin and management in place. And it's my total delight this evening to bring to you this topic, 10 Hacks for administrative um, productivity, for efficiency, if you would say so. Um, if, you've if you do not know, I'm, on the, I'm the author of three amazing books, Dear Educator, um, The School Administrator's Companion, and Effective Boarding House Administration. And so we are starting right away. I'm actually talking to us today about um, 10 hacks for effect admin for administrative efficiency. If you're an administrator or you are a manager, just say hello in the comments. I can see one person has joined. Oh, two people are here already. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're looking at 10 hacks for administrative efficiency. And you know how it is when you're a manager or you're an administrator and you just go round and round, you know, at work and you do not know if you're being efficient, if you're being productive. And here I'm going to just give you a few tips that will help you to actually do a great job as an administrator or manager, no matter your temperament, no matter, um, you know, your, your status or whatever it is in administration or how many years experience you have. So if you've joined me already, please just say hello. Say hello in the chat and introduce yourself. Okay, I see um, three people have joined me. I can see three people here. So the first thing, I didn't prepare slides because I just wanted it to be conversational. I wanted it to be conversational and here we are. So um, the first one we're going to look at is actually about AI. You, if you're in 2023, you cannot run away from the use of artificial intelligence, believe me. It's either you um, hook up to it or it just leaves you all behind. I'm telling you, um, I, I, if you've been following me, you'll know that in the past few months, I've done a few trainings on chat GPT, and that's not the only AI you need to know. It just happens to be really popular. And I ask that you get to know a few people who are really into tech to follow them and see the trends that are going on and see the one, the AI tools that will be useful to you and adapt to be able to use them. Okay, so get to know about AI, do a research and find out the ones that suit you and the things that you do. For example, I use ChatGPT a lot and I'm not lying about that. I also use um, several other AI tools which I teach to those in my inner circle, those who uh, hook up to me and are close, you know, to me, uh, uh, those that I coach or mentor. Okay, another thing you want to look at is actually uh, email management. You know, you cannot do without receiving or sending emails these days. And even though AI will help you to speed up how fast you write um, your emails, but there are certain email things, a few things that you need to know about emails, which I'm going to take us through. And uh, one of them is this, you first, you have to learn to use folders and labels. If you, if you use Google Mail or Zoho or whatever, you see that there are places where you need to, where you can actually label your emails. For example, emails from clients, you can have a particular folder for that. So whenever you receive emails from clients, you have them sorted into the uh, email folder, email for clients. Oh, Abasi, Abasi Bong Etang is here. Thank you for joining from Wio. Thank you. Incidentally, I'm speaking at the Aquibom 
um, teachers meet on Saturday. So it was, it was so nice to connect with you, Abasio Bonge Tang. Thank you for joining. And please let others know you can share the link so that others get to join right away. And if you can hear me clearly, please say so. If there's a problem with the audio, also let me know. So you scold us. Instead of just lumping all your emails and getting confused, and you know how it is when emails come and you just subscribe here and subscribe there, subscribe for things, especially with the quest for knowledge these days. You see everybody just subscribing for things. You know all those things they tell you, download this, download that. They don't come, they come at a cost because very soon they start bombarding your emails with all sorts of all sorts of uh, emails. And in a day, if you're not careful as a manager or as an administrator, you're going to get confused and spend your entire day either deleting emails or responding to some, and some are totally irrelevant. So first start by defining the kind of emails that should take your attention in a day. And if you're, if you're a business person, I would, I would say to you that emails from your clients should be prioritized because that's where your, your money comes from to run the business. If you're a school administrator, for example, emails from parents or maybe from the Ministry of Education, well, they don't send emails, those people, they'll rather visit. But I'm just saying, just in case they've started sending now. You know, so try to uh, prioritize them. Find labels, emails from colleagues, emails from bosses or supervisors, emails from, let's say, external stakeholders, have labels for all of your emails. It will make it easier for you to even sort them, um, you just sort them out to wherever they belong. Another thing is to schedule your email checks. As a manager, you know, everybody wants their emails responded to urgently, but you can't spend your entire day responding to everybody's emails because what's priority to them is not necessarily priority to you as a person or as a professional. And so you need to schedule your email checks. How many times do you need to check emails in a day? You know, so you could say maybe every day after you've gone round to check what your subordinates are doing or whatever is going on, you dedicate maybe one hour in the morning to just check emails, respond to them, whatever you can do right there. And then maybe before close of work. That has been my practice, actually. Okay. Then I needed to know that it's not every it's not every subscription that should go on year in, year out. As little as this tip sounds, you'll be shocked how well it will help you. So there are times when you just need to unsubscribe to some emails. All those ones that keep bombarding you, um, two days sales, um, two days to end of my promo, blah, blah, blah. And they are not relevant to you. At some point, they may have been relevant, but right now, maybe they are not. So you, you unsubscribe to them. Okay, so I've also applied the two-minute rule. If you can respond to an email right away within a few minutes, why delay it? So if while checking and you just see this works or this doesn't, immediately just respond to them and get done with it right there. Then turn up on necessary notifications. Turn on unnecessary notifications for emails and set up templates. If, you're, if there are certain emails you keep responding to um, regularly, for example, maybe you're a school administrator and people come in for inquiries for admission. And you, you should by now have a template that you can use to just change a few things there and tweak it and send. Instead of constantly having to um, redo an email all over and all over again, okay? So you can just um, find a very quick way to do this. Have templates for some things that are sent regularly. Maybe there are periodic reports. Maybe there are um, things that you know you send every month or things that you send to people who come to your uh, office for the first time or contact uh, get in contact with your business for the first time you could now find a way to make sure that this is actually a template now that runs and you don't have to keep repeating and um, redoing the same thing all over again then there are times you need to delete emails so that they don't some, sometimes when you have so many emails coming in and um, they are, some are not priority to you some are not necessary for your work you just need to know, apart from unsubscribing from unnecessary newsletters, you also need to know the ones to delete right away when they come. You know, just a quick scanner and you say, okay, no, this doesn't fit in. You either archive them or you delete. And then I need you to be very cautious about, about attachments and links. But you get attachments and links, please check and be sure that they don't get you into trouble when you're getting into emails 
Remember to use strong passwords for your emails and also turn on your two-factor authentication. So that is that is number two, right? We've talked about using AI. I didn't go into details about the type of types of tools. I remember using uh, mentioning um, Chat GPT, but you know there's also Bard, and there are several other other ones that you can you can actually um, use. So another thing you want to look at is your task or team um, or, or automation. Okay, you need to automate some tasks so that they just run on their own um, even if you create content you should be able to schedule them if you use facebook for example for your organization uh, you would see that there's a place there's a facebook um, manager uh, there's a facebook um, that, are, that are business uh, manager kind of that allows you to schedule your your post and then they can just drop whenever you're even if you're not there and it will seem like you're actually there you know with with everybody in I'm going to also look at efficient meeting management. You know how it is when you when you keep calling up meet for meetings over and over and over, and your subordinates just get angry because it's so time consuming. It's not everything as a manager that you you call for a meeting. There are times when an email would do. There are times when um, you could just drop whatever it is and people make their contributions. Sometimes we ignore tools as little as WhatsApp, maybe just having a, a group. Um, if you're not into all of those techie, um, big, big tech uh, things, um, you know, for managing your, um, your, your platforms in your office. So as little as dropping what it is that you people need to discuss and everybody sending in their contributions can save you the time to meet as, as a manager with your team and where people just keep, um, you know, wasting time and going on and on. And then when you eventually do meet in person, please make sure that there's always a reason for meeting. You have the right agenda and you have um, who is going to lead the meeting, what exactly you're going to discuss, and then input from as many people as possible, but in the best way you can to save time without people rumbling on and on. Because some of those meetings, you find out that a lot of times you do not even get to a conclusion. People just meet and meet and meet and meet as if it's, you know, it's like, this is routine for us. If you don't have to do routine meetings all of the time if you do not have things to discuss. But I, I, I would suggest that when you have meetings, make sure they are very, very productive. Make sure there's a proper ag uh, the agenda are well laid out. Everybody knows what is going to be discussed ahead of time and they come with their contributions. And you also make sure that you don't waste time because you have follow up from those meetings where everybody has um, a task, a task that is actually delegated to them at the end of the meeting to follow up against the next one. That's as against just meeting and meeting and meeting and meeting. You know, you ask some people, uh, how often do you meet? Say every week. What do you do? I don't know. We just meet. Every week we meet. Uh, my organization says we must meet. But if you check the productivity of those meetings, you see that not a, a whole lot of them as productive as we would want them. So research into meeting management techniques and make sure that your meetings are both stimulating, productive, and very efficient and time uh, managed within the time that, that is allotted to it, okay? Um, then you also need to look at digital declutter. You know, recently I wanted to put my laptop on and I noticed that it took forever for it to boot. That's because I had lost my... Uh, my hard drive, and so I was now saving everything on my laptop. Watch as I'm a, an organized person, I now found out that I had so many files in my laptop that it was even becoming a problem. So there's a need to declutter sometimes because some of those files may have been repeated. You have them here and there and there. So maybe you already have a file called um, admission for a file for 2023, and then you update, and instead of just adding up updated file to the previous name, you open, you have another one saved with the same name, or uh, maybe now updated. And when you're looking for the file, you find yourself getting confused because before you know it, you have updated and saved up to six different files with the same name. So there's a time, uh, maybe as if you're a school administrator and the new school year is starting, you might want to take time back to look at your system and declutter. 
arrange the folders. There's a training I did on managing um, files for school systems. I'm going to schools now because I've seen that the people who have joined me are actually in schools. At least Abasibong Ekong is a school administrator that I know. So you actually get to your laptop and declutter, rearrange the files, put the ones that need to be um, deleted away, and then rearrange them into folders, just like the emails that I discussed. Have them properly arranged, a few things here and there, arranged in a way that you can easily find the files and you do not waste your productive office hours uh, and time looking for files and searching for documents all over the place. You could even have um, I, um, um, things like Dropbox or Google Drive where you save them and properly arrange so that you can find them in whatever document it is that you're working with. All of these things seem very simple, but you'd be shocked how much we know them mentally, but we don't get to do them. So the clutter, do, uh, undergo some digital declutter for your systems. Search your phone. Start, if you use that to work a lot, some of us do these days. Search your laptop before the school year starts. Declutter some things. Let go. Even paperwork. Declutter your office of, of, of some documents. All those uh, memos and things that have been lying there for ages. And um, sometimes you're looking for something. What you see is something... Uh, uh, maybe a query that was given to a staff like God knows how many years ago and they are still there right there in your system uh, or, or in your office, you know, get, get rid of some of them and clear. And I've seen that when you declutter your environment and also your even your system digitally and even your physical space, it kind of frees you up to think better and to be more organized and more productive as well. If you're getting anything here, please just say so in the chat. Say something in the chat. Say hello. And uh, you can actually redo the points that I'm making. Um, I can see Abasu Obong is here. Who else is here? Please introduce yourself. I see three people here, actually. Please introduce yourself. Another thing you want to do is um, priority setting. Every day I have a to-do list. Much as I'm very techy, I also have... I have a I have a diary. I remember some time ago I did um I did um an article on on the use of diaries. You can see 2023. That's my diary for this year. And I've been keeping diaries since I was a teenager, and they've helped me to be super productive. I was actually taught to keep diaries by my dad before I got into the secondary school. Okay, Abbas, you bring it and say I agree. I have a decluttered desk, and it's so refreshing and allows clear thinking. Honestly. You'll be shocked how much your environment affects you mentally. Okay. So if you if you if you're used to just throwing things, I've been to some people's offices and I see their desk all, you know, with so many files and things here and there. And it just makes them feel very busy, but it does not necessarily mean you're very productive. And so the clutter, apart from digitally, also the clutter your office. Search for those files, those things, those memos, those um, things that don't serve anymore, and just trash them. If you have a paper trasher in your office, um, a trasher, or just trash them and you know trash them all away. You could even after after the, after you have uh, finished um, uh, all of that, you can donate it to the art department where they use for. Is it paper mache or some artwork or other things that they do? Thank you to the three people who are here. Please just be um, saying the points to me, you know, as we go on. So apart from the declutter, you also need time to just take a break. I'm a workaholic, and so I find myself always wanting to work the whole day, which is very unhealthy. And I, I must confess, a lot of managers are like that too. So don't look at me. With, don't give me that look, you know. Um, so I have found to take a break in between the day. Maybe just take a walk, uh, you know, get myself uh, maybe a smoothie or something to just refresh in or just stand up a bit and stretch. You'd be surprised how that helps you, um, even with your, you know, body, uh, blood flow in your body to be able to think better. It could be a walk maybe to your subordinate space to just have a chat, how they're doing, check what they're doing, encourage them, inspire them, and then you can go back 
um, to work. Because this whole me workaholic mentality of I must get all of this done within one day and you stretch yourself and stretch and stretch and the next day you're doing the same thing over and over again. At the end of the day, you see that it leads to less productivity. So learn to take breaks in between the day. It could be as little as just 5, 10, 15 minutes and you'll be shocked the difference that that will make to your day as a manager or administrator. Let's take a walk. If you want to take a drink, a smoothie, just do it. Do something you enjoy. Um, take your mind off work a bit. And if possible, try to meditate and think about really nice and amazing things that, you know, you produce and encourage yourself. And then you can get back to work again. So don't find yourself stretching the whole work day without a little break of five minutes or something in between. You can have that like two, three times in a day and you'll be shocked how that works, okay? Just a little five, 10 minutes, you know? Uh, some people do not even, even if, if you're a school administrator, you like with that, you don't even get to have break time, you know? Because you walk and walk and walk. I'm talking from experience. You walk round, round and round and round the clock. So I've talked about using, uh, getting tech, getting to do use tech to manage, which saves your time. Of course, you know that ChatGPT will help you write your emails, will help you with a whole lot of things that you do um, in the office and really save you time. Okay, I'm free up your time to be able to do other things. So don't be the manager that says, oh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not into all those techy things. You had better be because no one takes permission from you to come up with all these AI tools. And once they are available, it means that others are using them. If they are not using them, if you are not using them and others are, then it means they've gone a step ahead of you in productivity. If that helps to save time, you know, you can use it for brainstorming. You can use it to generate even, you know, points that you need to discuss at a meeting and be able to fine tune. There's a whole lot you can do with AI, a whole, whole, whole lot. Even for sending reports. I've actually been, I've, you know, used that to, to, um, to generate, and even when data that you have generated from maybe your research within your organization, you can use AI to analyze, um, AI tools to analyze them. We also talked about email management, and I said, look, 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 learn to manage emails. You just have to. Another thing you want to do is time blocking. You know, it's not enough to have a to-do list for the day. You must also know what time you are allotting for each of the tasks that you want to carry out daily. For example, how long do I check emails? What if I spend the whole day on my laptop just checking emails and sending emails and responding? Does that make me super productive during the day? Not necessarily, especially when there are other priorities that are waiting to be um, executed during the day. And so you have to not only have a to-do list, also block the time. What time am I allotting for email checks? What time am I allotting for this meeting? What time am I meeting? How, how long am I spending in the meeting with clients who come? This negotiation meeting, maybe for the children's uniforms, how long is it going to take? When, uh, when will I decide that, yes, we need to conclude on this? So decide not only to-do list, but on your to-do list, allot block time out daily as a manager to be able to do this. Okay, block time out. Thank you, Yusubo Riyomi. He says, I'm learning. Thank you. Good to know. Incidentally, I forgot to send a reminder. Not that I quite forgot. I just got into the house from somewhere. I've been out somewhere in Lagos and I just got in just and came on right here. So I didn't even have the time to set and I should have done a reminder ahead of time, but I did not be out so, so late today. You know, so I'm glad that a few people who have joined are actually learning and the rest who will watch as a replay will also make their comments, hopefully. So if you're watching this as a replay, please make sure that you write the points that have been useful to you. So it's not enough to just write to do. By the way, if you do not have a to do list, that's another level. You must have a to do list daily. Look at this. This is even my to do list for today. You don't have, I'm not going to let you read everything, but you know, that's my to-do list for today. So every, every day I actually set out all of the things I need to do for the day and to make it even more productive, you now allot time for each of the items. But you know, Lagos traffic, that one is very difficult to allot time. 
because I really didn't know I'd be out <laughs> until now. So you also have to be a bit flexible. I'm talking about the things within your control, especially like in the office environment, you must be able to allot time for each item. So if you do not have a diary, please get one. I'm a big advocate for diary keeping and journaling as a manager or an administrator. And if you know me over the years, you know that I teach that even to those who are close to me. So make sure you have a diary. You should not be a manager or an administrator if you do not have a diary. And over the years, I've kept diaries and I've told, I can tell you that they've helped me in being productive. In fact, when I used to be a school administrator and I had an executive assistant attached to me, we used to have our to-do list set at the end of each day. When I'd be closing from work, I'd sit with my, my secretary or executive assistant and would write out the things that we would be doing the next day. And then she would have a copy and I would have my copy. And I would tell her, you know what, um, you can get it. Let's just say her name is maybe Fumi. I would say, Fumi, you know, um, tomorrow, get in and ask me, ask me, okay? Even, even though I'm your boss, ask me if I've accomplished this, 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 that. And that helps to keep me accountable. So having a to-do list is not enough. Block the time. So I'll tell her by 11 o'clock, walk into my office and let me ask me if I have carried out this or if I have called this client, or if I've called this parent, or if I've actually um, done the report three quarter, maybe the goal was by, by 11 a.m. I should have finished three quarter of my monthly report to the school board. She would just walk in and say, hey, Miss Nancy, you asked me to come in and ask you if you have done so, 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 so. And I'll say, oh, thank you. You know, and that helped to keep me on track because when you're a boss, sometimes nobody holds you accountable. And that's a recipe for non-productivity if you're not accountable. So even if it is your subordinate, even if the person is your executive assistant, or even if the person is your secretary, I hope nobody has a secretary these days. With all of the tools we have, no one should 